Hello, uh, are you able to hear us? Yes, I am. Thank you for uh, waking up so early on a Sunday morning, but uh, I can assure you uh, over 40, 50 people are super happy that you did. I'm glad to be here. So we've just uh, watched your uh, three short films and uh, they're rather different in form, uh, one from each other. But to me, they convey a message of alienation, of uh, not really belonging, of being forced to do foreign things just to make yourself heard and seen, but not necessarily understood. Am I right in, inter in interpreting these messages this way, or was there something different that you wanted to express with these films? No, absolutely. I think that's, uh, <clears throat> that's a very... Um it really captures the three works together because I do th think of them as kind of in some way working together. They're a trilogy that of works that are really about uh, my own personal experience, but then how my own personal experience is constantly being challenged and what does it mean? How do we, how do I try to speak about my experience as a Palestinian refugee um, through these means that are um, challenging in a lot of ways. Sometimes, like you said, not being understood. I think in the first, you know, out of the three, um, there's different ways in which I try to talk about that and different levels in which I'm trying to hit on that, that explore other themes as well. But I think it's a very accurate reading. Um, the films were screened at various festivals and uh, other cinema events around the world. What feedback have you heard and what thoughts and emotions do they invoke usually in people? It's always interesting to hear different reactions because I do think one of the things, the biggest difference that I found is when they're screened to um, English speaking or Western audiences versus an, Arab, versus an Arabic speaking audience or maybe someone who is uh, more familiar with the situation. Um, one of the interesting experiences is I would like to visit, which is the centr this middle part that's uh, text. Um, I remember clearly screening it to a majority Palestinian audience who found it funny, which I think there's a dark humor in some of my work in a lot of ways, but I think sometimes that doesn't land with everyone. Um, but I also think that um, different reactions are usually about the visceral nature of some of the work that kind of, you know, I think with um, all three, one of the things that I also try to do is kind of hit on a, it's not necessarily emotional because my work is a bit removed and tries to engage with these very personal issues in a kind of analytical way. Uh, and it kind of really relates to this idea of the personal being political, but not obsessing with a personal narrative, thinking about the personal in kind of a, an analytical way. Um, but yeah, but I think there's always this, you know, I find interesting reactions that come where, you know, people haven't ever thought of linking some of these things together, particularly in North America, where I am currently um, living, where people kind of like to think about, you know, the Israel and Palestine and the colonization of Palestine as separate from what their history is. And for me, it was really important to connect to those two dots and really build that relationship of settler, um, you know, settler colonialism in North America, settler colonialism in Palestine, and in some ways also make people think about settler colonialism in South Africa, in Australia, and as all systems of the same kind of politics. Um, you're right. Well, we, we, have, the, we have a saying uh, in Lithuania, this is related to, to the dark humor part uh, of your movies, where I couldn't help but smile because I'm uh, quite a fan of dark humor. And I think uh, in, in this situation in, in Palestine, it is actually very necessary. So the saying goes that, uh, this comes from the Tsarist uh, occupation uh, times of Lithuania, that uh, if uh, for a landlord, if you're beating somebody and they are crying, uh, you should continue beating them. But as soon as they stop, uh, they stop crying and start laughing, then you know that it's enough. So uh, unfortunately, I think uh, the, the point of laughter is, is, is uh, long uh, here already. 
Recently, you were part of uh, From the River to the Sea, a coalition of cultural organizations in Montreal that held film screenings in solidarity with Palestine. There you talked about how we experience the immense violence and suffering in Gaza through images. Um, what do you think the role of images is in the current genocide onslaught and in the history of Palestine in general? I think it's really important. I think one of the things that um, is kind of really unique about how we're experiencing this genocide is that really for most of us outside of Palestine, uh, we are really looking at it through images. We're experiencing a genocide in real times at some point with people really reporting on it from within the genocide. It's not journalists who are trying to come from the outside. It's really the images are coming out from Gazans to the world. Uh, and I think trying to think about what does that mean to be experiencing it, not just on um, through images, but also through platforms that are generating advertising revenue as we watch a genocide is for me where this kind of darkness comes from this humor almost of just like this is too dark to even fathom of us trying to do this kind of political work um, as we experience it on these platforms. And I think that's where for me the last um, the last part of you know my the film of me being in the cold it's about thinking through offering our bodies offering suffering in images through images as a way to try to communicate our experience and trying to communicate our politics but then having to really think about dehumanizing palestinians through images it's a lot of these um, kind of really visceral images coming out of Gaza. Um, and I think it's really important to be thinking about what does it mean for someone to really dehumanize themselves of in the form of images to try and get the Western world or the outside world to really see and to kind of in an attempt to build solidarity. I think one of the things that really, you know, we think about images as things that you know are contained we look at films we look at art we look at this kind of these kind of images um and they in some ways the experience is done when we're finishing the work and i think it's really important to be thinking about work that links back to the reality of what's happening on the ground um, and i think that's really important there's a lot of there's a difference between humanitarian images, and I think there's we see a lot of those. We see a lot of these kind of humanitarian images that in some ways just want to paint Palestinians as victims. They just want to paint Palestinian suffering. They just want to represent Palestinian suffering. And I understand why we do that. And I understand why even some people who are in solidarity focus on that. But I think we also don't think of the damage that does to people and to the Palestinian identity. I think there's also so much to be said about thinking about what does a revolutionary image mean? What, should, what is an image of resistance? What is an image of um, people who are standing up and people who are speaking about their own experiences, people who are speaking about their own rights. Uh, what does that look like and how and why and how can we focus on those as opposed to really just be pushing these kind of humanitarian images that really want to just paint the Palestinians as uh, people who just suffer. And although there is a lot of suffering and that's not something to say that we want to discount that, but it is really about capturing the complexity of the experience of being a Palestinian, whether on the ground, whether as a refugee, whether in Lebanon, in Jordan, in the West, wherever they are. Victimizing uh, sort of removes agency from the Palestinians as well, you, you know, makes them somehow passive. And well, one of the goals of, of this event and our work in general is to to actually stop this uh, victimhood narrative and, and and only talking about the occupation. And it's funny that you mentioned this um, 
uh, advertising uh, that uh, somebody is making money from uh, from clicks on genocide. And we faced the same uh, dilemma when we wanted to circulate our uh, pro-Palestinian solidarity protest on Facebook and we were considering of uh, purchasing ads. <laughs> and uh, eventually the money would go into uh, Zionist entity. So uh, luckily we, we, we didn't do it in the end. Um, uh, how have images and moving images been used to frame Palestine in the past? And how can we use them to counter the Zionist narrative uh, today? So I think one of the things that, so like you mentioned, we I work with a coalition where we show films in Montreal and in North America to try and advocate for Palestinians. I think one of the things that is really important to think about is about who's generating these images and what are they trying to say? Because I think that, um, so, just to, make, to kind of give a bit of a reference, the Palestinian Film Unit, which used to um, actually be part, an arm of the PLO, which is the Palestinian Liberation Organization, um, in the 60s and in the 70s was actually res making films on the ground. There were a number of filmmakers who are trying to create um, these films that really focus on uh, celebrating Palestinian re resistance and really framing Palestinian resistance as what it is, is a as a struggle against a colonial um, aggression and trying to cre create solidarity with other movements around the world. Um, and one of the things that um, happened is that um, Israel aggressively bombed the Palestinian film's office and made sure to destroy the Palestinian film unit's archive. And so this really brings to part about how important it is to think about images. I think um, you also think about the, the fact that one of the, uh, as part of the ongoing genocide, Israel black South Gaza, so they're not able to produce images, they're not able to get them outside. I think there is an importance to be thinking about what does it mean to be able to see what's happening there, uh, but also what kind of way are we framing these kinds of images. Um, and I think that that difference between really thinking about Palestinians highlight and like focusing on Palestinian voices, focusing on people on the ground who are reporting, who are telling you how they want to be seen, how they want to be uh, shown. I think that's really important. And I think it's really important to be thinking about what does it look like to see Palestinians as not just people who are suffering under a genocide, suffering under violence, but also to see them as people who are through different versions of just existing are trying to resist the occupation, are trying to resist the genocide. Um, and I think that's really kind of where we you start to think about what kind of, what is the nature of image making when it comes to representing um, and, or and communicating the kind of real violence. Well, the bombing that you mentioned of the of the film institute is is still continuing to this day on the internet. I mean, we are uh, being bombed as uh, Palestine LT all the time as well. Posts being removed, shadow banning, all of this is basically the same, the same bombing, but in virtual space. Um, in the past uh, two months, we saw a constant stream of unimaginable violence broadcast live, as you mentioned before. <coughs> to a point where one becomes mentally and emotionally paralyzed because one feels helpless in front of such evil. And uh, this helplessness uh, I can share you know, uh, myself personally. Meanwhile, uh, people in Gaza uh, are being mur murdered every minute. What do you think uh, is the best way to deal with, uh, with this onslaught of imagery? I think it's really important not to look away, but I also think as someone who also on a very personal level also is dealing with this feeling of health helplessness, trying to kind of think through what does it mean? I think there is something to, personally, I do think that I try to, whether it is kind of highlight um, 
voices and images that are coming out of Gaza that are not um, dehumanizing to the dead. Because I think there's something about what is happening um, that in some ways really disrespects the bodies of the dead, disrespects or dehumanizes the people of the dead. And I think it is really important to acknowledge the horrificness of the violence. But I also think it's important not to focus on that because I do think that's what causes the helplessness. I do think it's also really important that whatever these feelings do come up to remember that actually one thing to keep in mind, so many people from Gaza are speaking in English, right? And this is something really kind of, they're speaking in a language they're not comfortable with. They're speaking in a way that they're not particularly comfortable. You see them trying to communicate. I think that's really important to highlight because what they're doing is they're trying to reach the largest audience possible around the world. So what does that mean? That means that they're trying to communicate something directly to everyone, to all of us sitting out here, and that is to move, to act. And so I think it's important to highlight those voices that are calling for action. There's a lot of things we can be doing and should be doing. I think whenever this feeling of helplessness really comes up, it's really important to think that actually we are at a moment where there is so much mobilization that we need to be pushing further because the price of Palestinian liberation is way too high. Too many people are dying and so we need to be moving forward and we are the ones who really have the power to cause change. I think focusing on, you know, whether it's uh, doing advocacy work, highlighting Palestinian voices, whether it's really um, focusing on the boycott campaign. So Palestinians from within Palestine and outside are asking people to really boycott and sanction, trying to also talk about with their politicians, trying to call for a ceasefire, trying to call for an end of the occupation, uh, trying to call for a real permanent solution, not a return to the status quo that really resulted in this violence. Um, and so I think it's really important to be thinking about what kind of, what we can do because even though those images can make you feel helpless, it's important to really think about our privilege and what we are doing. And I think it's important to be looking at those people who are speaking to us, who are, you know, I think in the first part of the film, in the films that I make, P is for Palestine, I show someone who's trying to rehearse the words in English in, of politics. And I think one of the reasons why I focused on the letter P is actually the fact is that in Arabic, we don't have the letter P. So the letter P is something that is tricky for us to say. Once we learn it, it's like a, a status symbol almost, or a way that now, now we prove that we can speak to the West because we can say this letter. And so I think it's really about trying to think through this idea that these people are using a language they're uncomfortable with, a, a language that doesn't capture their own experience at all. And they're trying to kind of figure out ways to communicate with people and the, the trickiness of that communication um, within those realms. It's also our job to uh, solidarity organizations, people uh, uh, all around the world to amplify those voices and to also you know, choose which imagery the, uh, we circulate. For instance, uh, we we in Palestine at ODLT, we never uh, we never show the dead bodies, and we think that this is something that plays only into the hands of uh, of the occupation and uh, further dehumanizes Palestinians. And you mentioned uh, the privilege that you mentioned. It's it's also another thing that uh, another reason why people should get involved uh, all around the world, especially in West Europe, in the countries which support Israel, because that privilege itself is being eradicated as we speak, even for us. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're facing all sorts of censorship and, you know, even looking at the latest laws in Germany, uh, it's, uh, it's becoming quite uh, worrisome and scary. Absolutely. I, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's really telling that I think this issue is really spilling into people's rights and social liberties, liberties being taken all over the world. It's kind of a shocking uh, thing to see that somehow 
freedom of, you know, these things that, quote unquote, the West has been celebrating, democracy, freedom of speech, all of these things are suddenly not applicable here. And suddenly all these people who want to speak, the, the their rights are being taken. So uh, I think it's really telling that in some ways Palestine and the Palestinian genocide has become um, a way to really highlight the limitations of quote unquote Western democracy, Western liberalism, and you know these notions that are very liberal in this way. Yeah, ab absolutely. Even the, the the not only free speech uh, but the international law law in general seems to not apply anymore, either. Um, before we uh, conversation with you today on the event, we were talking with the uh, Ashtar Theater from uh, Ramallah. And uh, one of the questions that we asked them was, uh, you know, Palestinians always, Palestinian artists uh, always probably feel inclined and it's expected of them to always talk about the, you know, talk about the occupation as if other topics didn't exist and art is much wider than that. So the question base for you is, do you believe that all art, including cinema, is political? Should it be, or shouldn't it be? I I, I personally do. I do think that like uh, all art is political. I think all perspectives are political. Uh, and I think that's not just true for Palestinians. I think that's true for everyone. Um, I think that obviously there's pressure on Palestinians to speak directly to the occupation, to the genocide, to these factors that are really tangible in terms of how politics plays out in our day to day life. Um, but I also think this is part of kind of what my work is about is uh, trying to think about, you know, the fact that someone like me wants to say, I just want to go on a I want to visit, I want to go on a vacation, I want to go on a journey, becomes this complicated paragraph of politics and nuance and ideas. And so I think this is one thing, a way for me to say, yeah, when anyone else is just making a film about a vacation they went on or some journey, that's politics. That's politics they're not seeing. They're not seeing border politics. They're not seeing privilege. They're not seeing uh, these kinds of things that play out in their day-to-day -day life. And I think someone making a film about, you know, their everyday experiences, there is implied politics in that. And I think it's just about whether or not you're choosing to highlight it or you're choosing to hide it. Um, but that being said, of course, the for Palestinians, there's um, there's a tangible um, way in which they there is pressure to speak about these kinds of things more directly. Um, for me, although I do feel the pressure, I also in some ways know that this pressure is not just external, but it's also personal in the in the sense that. I grew up and have lived all my life and my existence has always been political. It's just, I am unable to necessarily, I don't have that privilege in which there are days where I can kind of just not be experienced politics on every, in, in a day-to-day -day life, whether I'm, you know, trying to apply for jobs or visas or trying to think about, you know, um, where you're going. I'm uh, thinking about, how different things, how, you know, a talk I did is going to affect what my, you know, next apartment, you know, is going to be, whether my landlord thinks about something, whether, you know, a person that I meet on the street is going to say something to me. I, I think that's the thing that um, f when we talk about privilege and about the privilege of not, um, it, it's essentially the privilege of not needing to see the politics in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, even the, if you look at human rights from a apolitical perspective, when you when you start dealing with uh, Palestine, you start getting the you know the same concerns uh, personally yourself. I mean, I'm me, not not I'm not be uh, Palestinian, but some of the concerns that you mentioned uh, about the apartment or a job <laughs> might uh, might as well apply. Uh, <laughs> if we continue talking, um, so uh, what Palestinian films are are your your personal favorites? What would you uh, recommend, to the audience? 
Oh, there's really a lot. There's so many amazing filmmakers. Um, Ilya Suleiman is one of my favorite filmmakers. He is a, he does fiction films, um, one of which is uh, Divine Intervention. Um, also, uh, Jumana Manna, who's also a really brilliant um, visual artist and filmmaker, um, who uh, her films uh, that include her latest called Foragers is really brilliant, is about um, kind of really dealing with uh, the greenwashing as well as really dealing with foraging as like a, uh, as an idea in Palestine. Um, I also, I, Larissa Sansur is a brilliant artist that talks about uh, uh, Palestinian futurism. Um, there's also um, a, a really powerful film, um, Ghost Hunting, uh, by a filmmaker called Ra'ed that is about um, the political prisoners. Um, so there really is, and I think one thing that is also um, important for me, I think all of these different films are formally so different. You have experimental films, you've got fiction films, you've got documentary films, and I think it's really great and amazing to see so many filmmakers that are trying to do so many work uh, amazing works um, about that. Would you, because um, I've seen quite a few, actually majority of the Palestinian movies that are the one thing that would connect them in, in, in a way is, uh, is humor. Um, there's, that's uh, not necessarily dark, but uh, there's quite a bit of humor. So would you, would you, would you say that it's something very, uh, uh, Palestinian in general to your culture, like this is specific, uh, specific kind. That's interesting. I, I do think that there is some kind of humor. I think it's more possibly a defense mechanism. I think, um, in some ways we kind of Palestinian culture, unfortunately right now is so tied to trauma is so tied to this like really big, you know, we talk about the Nakba, the Nakba is, and that really has uh, framed our identity in some ways, which is the establishment of Israel. And it's, we say the word Nakba, which literally translates to catastrophe. And so if you think as catastrophe as tied really inherently to your identity, I think there, as a way to just kind of cope, you kind of have to laugh at it. I think I really like your example of being like, yeah, you're beating someone when they're crying. It's okay. It's like when they start to laugh, that's really like, you know, um, where it gets a bit difficult. I think there is something to, um, yeah, to that. I think it's just like trying to kind of find hope, trying to find some kind of like humor in the absurdity of the situation uh, that, we find ourselves in there is like, uh, um, and I think that's the thing. A lot of the humor is absurdist is this kind of like thing of this is so crazy that you kind of almost have to find it, um, a little bit funny. Yeah. And in, in some ways humor, uh, seems to sometimes work even, even better than, you know, arguments and facts, uh, what we've seen for, for instance, from, uh, Basim Youssef's, uh, you know, videos with uh, Pierce Morgan, where he basically, with humor, he managed to explain, I think, uh, much more than quoting uh, dozens of, you know, facts and uh, UN resolutions. Um, um, we'd love to have you uh, even longer, but um, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you the last question, and that is, uh, what are you working on next? Uh, I mean, I I was working on a, another film, and this is an archive film. I think, um, in some ways, it's a bit strange to be thinking and talking about work, my own work. Um, it feels like after uh, October seventh and after the aggressive genocide, a lot of the work I've been doing now is in uh, advocacy, in organizing screenings, and trying to create some fundraisers, and trying to do more of that work. Uh, I think this is, uh, you know, it feels a little bit like it's hard to speak about our own work. Sometimes it even feels too dark to be talking about cinema and art, because there's just such a really 
I mean, this genocide that's taking place is so aggressive and so real and so um, horrifying that it's hard to sometimes try to think and step back and think about ourselves, um, particularly as people, you know, Palestinian refugees outside of Palestine, where whether it's our brothers and sisters in Gaza, whether it's really our families in the West Bank that are also now really receiving a lot of aggression. They're also being kidnapped by the Israeli offense force. There's really, they're, they're being brutalized. Um, I think this is really a hard time to kind of be thinking about uh, future work. Um, and I think if uh, I'm to leave, not so much thinking about me and my future work, but more about the work we all can be doing in the future, because I think it's really important to highlight the importance of this moment. It's really important to highlight the fact that um, all of these people who's losing their lives, if there's going to be any justice in the world, if there's going to be any meaning to all these deaths, is that we find a real solution now. I think really trying to think about how what the work that we can do to help that happen. And so I think really, again, it's about trying to think of what does solidarity mean in your day-to-day -day life? Is it talking to people? Is it just having conversations? Is it just boycotting products that are on the boycott list? Is it about making phone calls to your representatives? Is it about organizing other screenings where you can have this kind of conversations and you can educate? I think, in some ways, I'm almost unable to think of my own work right now. Yeah. Um, we as uh, Palestinian activists, some of us share the, the same uh, issue, unable to, to think about uh, other work. Uh, thank you very much for, for uh, spending time with us. This is uh, very, very important for us. Um, it's, we're, it's very important for in Lithuania to talk about Palestine because uh, very few people do, but uh, more and more. And uh, most importantly, to, to humanize Palestinians. And uh, I would encourage you to do think about your work because your work is very important. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you for having me and good luck with, and good luck. And I really want to just thank you for all the work you guys are also doing and for everyone who is there in person and watching online. Thank you.